Hi, I'm Mauro Porcini, PepsiCo's Chief Design Officer. Join me for our new series where we dive into the minds of the greatest innovators of our time, with the goal of finding what drives them in their professional journey and in their personal life. Trying to uncover the universal truths that unite anyone attempting to have a meaningful impact in the world. This is In Your Shoes. Many people believe that fantasy and imagination are just a way to escape reality. While you almost always need fantasy and imagination to better understand and to better interpret the reality. I want to let go, I want more for myself. I want to jump, to fall towards the sky. I'm quoting the guest of today. He's a man of many talents. He's an author, an actor, a screenwriter, a radio television presenter, and a larger than life personality but mostly is one of the most creative person that I ever met. He's hosted his own innovative radio show for more than 15 years, and his 10 books have been translated in 20 languages around the world and have sold more than 7 million copies in Italy alone, making him the author that sold the most books in modern history of the country. He's usually the one asking the questions, but today we'll try to put ourselves in his shoes. Fabio Volo, Welcome to In Your Shoes. Thank you very much to have me here. It's an honor. Thank you. <laughs> so, well, this podcast is about innovation and creativity. Uh, we have been hosting many people that belong to that category, and you for sure are one of those. Actually, you, you're one of the most curious and creative innovators uh, that I know. You, you work across many different media platforms, from uh, books to your own TV show, your own uh, radio show, and... What is the common trait, the common point across all these media platforms? How do you innovate across so many different worlds? Uh, um, okay, so first I start that for me, what is very important that I use my job to express my creativity. And this is something that I learned when I was around, let's say like 20, that if I can express myself with the creativity, I feel good. It's like really the, the um, make me feel very good. And I use a different, like I, I write movies, uh, radio show, TV show, and uh, TV series and uh, books because uh, creativity, let's say it's, it's like a town, you know, and if you visit the town with dif in a different way, you see different town. No? If you come to New York and you choose to walk around, you see one New York. If you take the subway, it's another town. If you take the car or a bus, it's so every different way to visit the same things give you a different um, view for the for what you're visiting. And my creativity, like when I do the radio, it's more instant because the radio is the fastest, um, let's say, media. No, sometimes I organize my uh, my speech for the radio when the song is still on, and then when I when I turn on my 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 microphone, I go completely in another direction that I don't even know because it's very fast. Uh, when I write a book, I have no budget, so I can really enjoy. I can write a scene that I'm in a gigantic castle with 20 pink pony, for example, <laughs> and it's for free. But if I do a movie and I want to rent a castle and find 20 pink pony, you need a lot of money. So I cannot do it with the movie, but I can do it with the book. So I use different media because different media give me the possibility to express my creativity and uh, my creativity it's important because uh, it's not that when you express yourself you what you do is who you are it's but the creativity it's a tool to learn and uh, investigate about yourself so it's like to go to a therapist <laughs> how do you define what are the key characteristics of a creative person and is creativity the same thing as innovation doing things mm that nobody ever did before or is something different? Well, how do you think as a but creative I person? Think, I think every, every person on the planet has a talent and has a creativity. When I, when I do speech, sometimes I do speech in a, like university I, 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 or in some situation, I always, I always said that everybody has a talent. Talent and creativity, when you, when you use these words, especially in Italy, they are they are attached with art, you know? When you say you have a talent, you think you are a musician or a painter, or, but, you, but, but talent, it's also be a good listener is a big talent. You can open your bar and have 
the talent to manage your restaurant or whatever it is. So um, I think it's not something that God or whatever you believe it, it gave it to someone and not to someone else. It's just how confident you are to express yourself. And this is really related to your childhood, I think. So you can inspire the talent since you are a kid through your parents, your social context. And can you train somebody, let's say, you know, when you arrive in your 20s and, and, and after, obviously, all your life, do you think you can take somebody with an expressive talent and train this person to become talented in any field? Or, or you need to have a talent to start with? No, I think not in any field. Like, I don't think you can really do whatever you want with good result. You can do whatever you want and be okay with it. But I think you can give uh, to a person tools and then they create their own, uh, their own life. For example, in my, uh, in my history, I, mm, I met this person who gave me the first book and I didn't like to read at the point. And I say, you know what, reading is not my thing. You say, no, but you are a kind of person that if you read, you will love it. <clears throat> and I say, okay, I will, I will give it a chance. And then I start to read and I like it. And I read another book. And then I became like a craving of books and reading. And, and, and then at some point, I just wanted to write my own story. And just because I had a person who gave me this, this tool, I think that uh, every person with good, steam, you know, with good situation, you can st st stimulate them and they can find their own way. And sometimes you start, to do a job or you think that is your goal and then while you are doing it you realize that it's not yours but from that point that you got you can go in another direction and new dream keep you know comes and change your old dream but it's just it's just one trip you know it's like when i write my book the story that i have in my in my head when i start to write it's never the story that I, that I write in the end of the book. So the book, when it's finished, it's never the same story that I start with. It, it's just, you know, it's a path. It's and we're talking about books and mentors. You actually started with the radio and yeah. still today you have a show. How many yeah. people listen to your show every about day? About a million that it's, it's good. In, Italy, in Italy, the it's 60 million country, <coughs> 60 million people yeah. country is pretty mm -hmm. uh, impressive. So you start with the radio and talking yeah. about mentors, uh, you met at a certain point in your life, a person that completely by coincidence yeah. was also one of my key mentors, uh, Claudio he was, Cecchetto. He was the mentor of our generation because yeah. he was in charge of everything. He was the <laughs> king, yeah, yeah. He's, he's somebody that has been creating many, many celebrities mm. and talents uh, in our countries, especially in the show business in that kind of world. So can you tell us more about that encounter, the role of this unique mentor? But in general, you were doing something completely different than the radio world. Mm. And then something happened. Yeah, like the first guy that I met is the one that I said before, and I was 16, 17, and I started to read the books. And that was a big tool for me to, uh, to choose what you want, and also just to ask myself what I want. And the second is for sure uh, Claudio, that he has this radio. And I went there uh, because I was singing a song at that moment. And I just want him to put it in the radio. And then we start to talk. And then he asked me, why don't you do the radio? So I, I never thought about it. You know, it's, I, so you can come here and I will, I will teach you. And I was, you know, I was living like a, let's say, 100 kilometers from there. I didn't, I didn't even have a car, so I asked my sister the car, and I went there every morning, and I thought he would just teach me how to do the radio, but no, he just said, you have to come here and be like a cactus, be a plant. No, you stay here, you just breathe here, you just try to get the atmosphere and situation, and then you can ask, don't disturb people that are working, but just try to be part of this. And then after a few days, he said, you know, you don't have to go on the, and do the radio show and pretend to be someone else. Your, your goal, it's if you can be with the microphone on like you are here, that you've been in those days, you will, you will get it. Because you don't have to be another person. You just need to protect who, who you are. And that was, and so I didn't do anything. He never really teach me how to do the radio. He just give me confidence. And then uh, at some point, the last day that I was there and I thought, you know, I screw up because it didn't look very happy to have me there. But then 
in the end, he asked me to do half an hour radio show and I just, I was very honest and I was just say, you know, I just have a feeling that I, it's like going out with the beautiful girl in high school and now when she say, yes, you're not prepared for this, <laughs> no? And I just like, so I was, this was the dream of my life to be here with all your people and now I'm here and I understand I'm not prepared and, you know, I... I really feel it's the first date, you know? And, but I was so naked in this moment. I was so honest with no mask, so fragile that when I was driving home, he called me and he said, Monday, you're on air. So, and I realized that in the most fragile, naked moment in my life, it's, it, it's when I got what I want. So, and I always bring this experience with me. When I pretend to be stronger or when I pretend to be cooler or when I pretend, there is something phony, no, not real. But when I'm just me in front of, you know, very fragile, I I understand it's you you get the people. And this is also what I use when I write my book. I just don't pretend to make my character too cool. I just go there in, in their fragility because even if we live different life in a different country, there is always something inside that make us all the same because we are human beings, no? And, and Claudio, Claudio Cecchetto, still talking about him, was also somebody who was giving tough love, right? Ooh. You know, he was giving hard time. I remember yeah. to myself, I'm sure, about, <coughs> you know, to you and many other friends that we have. So how, how important it is that, you know, tough love, that direct feedback, and that those moments that are difficult, you know, struggle when you're like, mm. oh my God, I, I think I cannot make it. it mm. They pressure you, but that's yeah. when you come out. What do you think about? But I about cried it? a lot with Claudio. <laughs> I remember driving like, and cry, and I remember also, you know, I'm Italian. I call my mom, and my <laughs> mom, <laughs> and my mom say, "Oh, come home. It's okay. You don't have to struggle so much." And I and I say, you, you know, it was like, no, I I don't want to give up. There is something that you know I have to achieve, and I will, and then. One day after I stopped work with him, like a few years ago, I just say, wow, you sometimes you were very tough on us, especially on me. I remember I cry. But why did you do this? No, what's, what's so cool about it? And he said, I prepare you for a war. You know, it's like a military school in some way. But it was very good, to be honest. And um, every, everything that the moment was unfair, it's like with my dad, I have to be honest. I, you know, my first master in life, it's, it's my dad. But I didn't know at the time because my dad, especially when I was a teenager, I kind of, at some point, hate him because sometimes he just say no. And when I explain, you know, I want something, he say no. And I say, why? He just say, because it's no. And this drive me crazy because I didn't have like an answer to, and I was sure that it was unfair, but this, no, and this unfair, it really teach me how to fight for what I think was good. And then when I moved to a big town, you know, I was really prepared when someone say no, I was like, I, I will make this no a yes, because I already had my father experience. So it's important because if you don't struggle, you don't grow. It's uh, when I find someone who tried to stop me, I, I, I have more pressure so I can, you know, I can really, you know, become stronger. Yeah. I think it's always a very fine balance, pushing back, mm. creating, you know, the tough condition to stimulate people. Mm. And then in the meantime, then inspire them and somehow help yeah. them, giving them a platform. And uh, it's, yeah. it's not easy. It's not, I think both with your teams and then uh, with your family, with you, you have See, two kids, it's, it must be... It's difficult. Also, now that I'm a father, I, I know I have to say no, but it's very difficult to say no because they're, you know, they're so cute. They come with these big eyes <laughs> and I say, you know, I, I'm so sorry because I want to be also your friend and I want you to love me more than the way you love your mother because I'm in competition <laughs> with her. And so if I say no and I'll be a father strong, you know, a strong father, you will love her more than me. But... You know, but then I know that if I say no, I do something not good maybe for me at the moment, but I'm doing something good for them. And this is probably love, basically. It is not yeah. easy, I'm sure. But going back to the world of the radios, and I've been listening to your show for many years before mm. meeting you and becoming friends. And, and 
what I do in PepsiCo, it mm. may sound really, really different than what you do, but there is a common point that always fascinated me and that probably many people don't see. You know, with our products, we reach millions and millions of people around the world. And with design, we're trying to create experiences and designs that are as sophisticated as possible. And sometimes it's difficult to balance that sophistication of message and, and the depth of design with something that is understandable and accessible to millions and millions of people. You do something really magic, you know, in all the platforms we, you play with. I think in the, in the radio show, it's very, very obvious. You reach every morning millions of people uh, and they love you, but with a message that often is very deep, is very sophisticated. You talk about philosopher, you uh, poems, and and very niche music. So how do you balance the two worlds? <clears throat> First, you have to give. You have to have. They have to approve you. You know, like when I was a kid, they always tell me, if you go to fish you put on the hook what the fish like, not what you like, you know? You don't go to fish with lasagna, you put the verb, <laughs> because fish, they, you know, they want this. And you just give them what they want, so, and then step by step, you just put what you want and take, because now they, they trust you, you have your trust. Um, I don't go at the radio and I talk about Dostoevsky like this, because maybe there are someone not ready to, to do this. What I want to know, what I want to do, it's, make them love Dostoevsky. So maybe I don't talk about Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky is my goal. So I start with little step, you know. Also, when you are innovating something, you have to choose if you're doing to prove how cool you are. I, you're, you know, you just, I'm so cool that I have something that you don't understand. And if you really care about them and you really want to bring them to this point. So if you want to do the second thing, so this is what I like to do, uh, you have to do it step by step, you know, it, you, you want your kids to eat the uh, chocolate with 90% of cacao. <laughs> if you give them the first time, they will just spit it out and they will never want to eat it. But if you go step by step, they will, they, they will reach the point, you know, it's like you have a teenager son, you want him to read and, and if you give him a very tough book, he will never love to read. You have to go slowly by slowly. And this is what I do, not because I think I'm better than them, but I have a different life and I have time to read in the afternoon because it's part of my life, it's part of my job, but they work in the afternoon. So I don't think I'm better, I just have more time. So I have to go slowly with them, not because they are less intelligent, but just because they have less time. That's, uh, I, I think it's very translatable to the world of brands and design Absolutely. and corporations. Yes. You take people with you. You know, in, uh, in PepsiCo, as in any other big corporation, we do a lot of consumer testing, consumer research. We really try to understand the people we talk with. And right now you mm. just told me, essentially mm. you do something similar in a completely different way. I guess social media helps you a lot in this, mm. right? Before, so, right now you are having conversations with them. You have direct feedback to anything you say. Yeah. Positive and negative, they, they react to you. How did your job and your uh, work of understanding people mm. change with social media and this direct communication? Like for me, it's always important that I reach the maximum people of what I want to say. Uh, uh, it's like I said, I don't care that I want to tell them people how cool I am. I just want to let them enjoy what I enjoy. You know, if I see a movie that I love, I want to share it. I don't want to say that I, I watch this movie just because it's cool to say. I just want to share it because if they are happy, I'm more happy and we, we share. I like to learn and, uh, and share. Uh, but I can like do or or say something that I know that they like. I know I can't sell myself so much. I it's always a little bit like find uh, find the balance between who you know because there are some artists that they just think about themselves. Uh, especially like in Italy, it's very popular that you write a book and nobody read that book. And instead to feel like you lost, you somewhere you fail, you start to feel cool. You say so it's so cool that people cannot understand because I'm too, you know, too intelligent, let's say, no? And uh, for me, it's the opposite. When if, if you write a book and nobody read the book, you're, you're a failure, you know? <laughs> this, on this theme of understanding people, there is some fun 
fact, you have been the voice of Kung Fu Panda ah, the in the Ita yes. <laughs> Italian version, and other Disney characters. And so, uh, tell us, how, how do you? I'm pretty sure you need to understand the character, right? The, yeah. You know the behavior, the mindset, and everything to really interpret mm. the voice of the character. How do you yeah. do? How do you interpret the character? They give you information. I mean, you obviously watch the movie, but you somebody don't watch tell the you, movie. oh, you don't. They don't let you watch really? the movie from the beginning. You just do it scene by scene, and sometimes you are able to read the script. But in that case, it, with. Kung Fu Panda. I was very lucky because it's basically my my biography. Like I, this is the movie that more represent my life. You are the panda. I am sir. absolutely What's the panda the because Paul. Paul he was a son of this mm, duck. It's also funny. He has a duck as a father, the panda, and they have like a noodles restaurant. And my father was a baker. And then I start to dream that I want to do something more more cool than and. And my dad say, okay, you have a store here. Why are you looking for something else? No, we are already lucky that we have a family business. And the panda has the same. The father wants him to do the noodles, but he wants to be a warrior. So <laughs> I, I, when I read the, the script, it was like, oh, this is my life. And it, was, it was very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So you were acting yourself, I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yes, yes, yes. I was also a little bit choppy at the moment. So... <laughs> So we're talking yeah. about how an innovator uh, you are, and you, you, you really are. And one of the key factors of innovation, we know it very well, you know, doing design in this company and big companies in general, is that you need to take risk. Yeah. And from time to time, when you take risk, you fail. And, mm. you know, it's experimentation. A lot of people call it failure. In reality, it's an experiment. Mm. So tell us a little bit about your experiments, your eventual failure. Yeah. But me, I'm more lucky than big company because, you know, big company has a lot of also budget they, to invest. But, you know, there is, I don't really think there are, there are mistakes or failure because actually if you, I don't want to do like a philosophy philosophical speculation now, but there is no, there is no mistake in life. It's just one package. At the moment, it's very tough, but then in your history, and then think about it, it's not just your history, it's, there is also a, a main kind of human history. So maybe your, it's your fail, but this fail is good for someone else. Uh, you know, it's just because we always watch life in our point of view. But if I, like, for example, I, I try to introduce in Italian TV this this mockumentary, let's say. It's like a documentary, but it's all visualized. In Italy, it was like a brand new, and I did it, and people say, why do I have to watch a TV that it's a base, it's a documentary about your life? I say, no, it's not documentary, but it's another thing. But I understand you, you don't have the tools to understand, but it's not about this. But I did it like three years ago, and it went, I, I, I knew there was no audience for that, but I really wanted to do it. You know? And now in Italy, they are working on three uh, TV show, the same that I did three years ago. But three years ago was not ready. But from that, it was more easy to understand now. So it was a little bit failure as a number. It was not failure for me because I learned how to write this uh, TV series. So for me, it was a big school, actually. If I've been in the school to learn, I have to pay, you know, <laughs> and study. I did it and I got paid. So I went to school and they also pay me and now I'm able to write a TV series. Plus, in my country now, they are producing three of this kind of mockumentary that was not there. So it, I don't see failure. <laughs> I, I, by the way, I really love this vision very broad of the world. And now mm. everybody somehow has a contribution mm. and collectively, essentially, you are progressing society. Yeah, it's it's yeah. beautiful. Then you, you can change also scale. If I think now, you know, people listening to us, maybe working in companies, imagine you have different teams in these mm. companies. One team may fail, mm. but if you have a system to capture the yeah. learning of the failure, it could become interesting, important know-how and data mm. and input to to grow through another team is a is mm. a is a fantastic. Uh, and also, mess. when you are in front of two choices, for example, you, they are they are both like jumping in the in the dark, and and then you do some something and it's wrong. So it means that this one is the right one, the the other choice. So the next one it doesn't have to choose because you already <laughs> tell them with what was the wrong one. So there is just a good one. It, so humanity grow, you know. I, I was thinking right now about my next question to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then 
an example that is totally, I, dev, I, never, Ra- think, I never thought about that. It's totally <laughs> random. Like you have been jumping from one field to the other over the years. And I know you have other <laughs> projects that will bring you even eventually mm. to other fields. And I was like, what is a company that did something similar? Apple actually is very similar mm. in this, you know, with a computer and then iPhones and or even in our PepsiCo <laughs> world, you know, jumping through different mm. territories and products and everything. So when is the time, Apple of Italy, you're mm. the Apple yeah. of Italy, when is the time to change, to try something different? How you decide that, you know what, now I did this for enough time, uh. I may still keep doing it because mm. often you go in yeah, parallel yeah, yeah, yeah. multiple media, but you want to do something different. Like, I, like for many years, I, I host a TV show that I was doing like a, like a late night show interview. And then they keep asking me to do it. And I just say, you know, I already did it. And, and now I have to move on. And I did this, the, the mockumentary, there was a new thing. It's just because if I have ent- enthusiasm, it's something that I want to do. Otherwise, I'm not, in, I'm, not at the be- uh, uh, I'm not a beginner. You know, I don't have to struggle and do something that I don't like. Now I'm almost 50 and I want to do what really gives me enthusiasm. And enthusiasm in Italian, it's enthusiasmo. It's uh, the, the roots of this word. It means that you have God inside. You know, it's this, it's, this is the roots oh. of the The of etymology the word. of yeah, the Yeah, the word etymology and... of enthusiasmo, it means abitato da Dio. It means that God lives in you. Oh. So I change when, I, when, when it becomes not just boring, but when I finish to work eight hours, I'm tired. But when I do something that I love, I finish and I can't wait to start again the day after. You know, it's, this is my, what I choose to do. Because for me, what was very, my big fear in life, it, it's that one day when I'm old, I will just turn back and see my life and see just one identical day. You know, it's the same day repeated and repeated and repeated. So, since I'm alive, I want to do different experience because different experience give me, give me different feelings so I can have, when I'm old, a lot of colors that I can... You so know. the first one was a nightmare uh, and the dream yeah, yeah. is to change the <laughs> same yeah. day, the monotony yeah. of the same. I think very similar yeah. to you. I mean, you have this fire inside that you just need to do something different mm. and evolve with, yeah. with your experiences and, yeah. and with what you're doing. And, and sorry, and I also learn, I didn't know in the beginning, that I don't care when I reach my goal. What I understand, what I really want is not to get my goal, it's to desire to, to be there. Because when I go on top of the mountain, I just look at you for a few seconds I, and, and then I start to look at the mountain. We have a, <laughs> a, a fellow rider. Yeah. Uh, like you in Italy, Giacomo Leopardi was uh, writing about yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Sabato del Villaggio, this exactly. poem where, you know, he was describing this Saturday this where Saturday, everybody prepared, you know, for the sun and then the sun arrives. Then, and yeah. the, the party, the, the joy yeah, is in the preparation, yes. the tension to And this work. is what I, and this is what I, I like, like. And so what inspires you then, you know, every day? Yeah. What, what, where do you find your inspiration and how do you inspire others? My, my inspiration is just just to you know when I when I walk when I read when I talk and I get inspired like um, it's it's more that you work with yourself you know <clears throat> like if I wanna I don't know like more I clean myself with my thought and more I fight with my my fear more I clean more I, I become as a, a better antenna let's say you know this is what you have to do it when someone approached me like a younger guy say I would like to write a book or do the radio what do you have to read about it and I say you don't you you if you want to learn how to do the radio before you start to study the radio you have to Take a walk, go and have ice cream, just enjoy or be happy or travel or whatever. Just it's about you because what do we do in the end, writing a book or whatever, this is the performance, you know, but the performance is the last step before you have to prepare, you know, like the, you go to see a ballet and the dancer before they arrive at this moment, they just, you know, they do push up and things all day that is completely different than the performance. It's you just need to clean yourself to to catch more idea because the ideas are everywhere. I, essentially, you know, I know you a little bit. Mm. I, I think is this peace of mind 
that is very dynamic. It's driven mm. by many tensions you have inside, but then mm. you reach that peace of mind. And then curiosity. curiosity. Uh, you know, you saw everything in life. You did everything. You've been exposed to everything, but you're always there listening to mm. people, curious, making, asking questions. What yeah. do you think about it? I this see this a... in many innovators. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's probably... Um... It's something that I always had since I was a kid and it's, and it's probably the lucky things I have because I'm very curious and I want to always keep a space to, let's, let's say, to, to, to be curious, to ask, to, to learn. Because of what I like to do is to learn and share, learn and share. This is my thing. I like to learn something and then go to my friend or the radio say, hey, guys, I just learned this. You know that you can do this. And also it's nice if you don't share it in the way that you know it's not coming from the top, but you're just coming from the same level and just say, I just learned this. What do you think about it? And then you have this brainstorming and you learn more. And curiosity, it's, uh, I think it's the key for everything. Yeah. How do you inspire others? Like your kids, for instance, or anybody that you care I've, about do you uh, do a ca conscious effort or is it just who you are no i don't think i don't want to inspire them but when i talk about something that i love automatically they they got inspired not not for me you know it's like when you are in this it's like to you know you you go in the room and you turn on the light and then you know you are not the light and it's not thank you but then even if you live you just change something and then other people they got inspired because you love you know it's it's basically the meaning of the the most famous um phrase in the divine comedy l'amor che nullo amato amar perdona also dante said this you know when you when you you know when you meet someone who loves something a lot and you meet, for example i love music if i talk about you about my music, you will love the same music in a second, or you will be curious to go home and listen it because I'm, you know, I give you with love, and this is what I want to do. You just briefly mentioned the Divina Commedia of Dante Alighieri. Uh, yeah, you, you know by heart. Or not, not all. Not all. Not all, but it, a lot of part. Yes. Why? Why? Because it's not a regular book. It's not a human book. It's something that it's there is the answer of every. If you have existential question in your life about God, about your life, about the way you love, the way you've been loved, whatever, there, there it, it's the answer. It, it's something that it, I don't believe that a man wrote this <laughs> book. It's, it's something that become, come from God or something like this. I don't know. And, and for the non-Italian listening to us, and I guess the, uh, the most part of the people listening to us today, the Divina Commedia is written in ancient Italian, so it's really, really difficult to... With, with rhyme. It, yeah. It's in quartina, it's mean four, you know, four sentence, all in rhyme for like, I don't even know how many pages. And there is all the most deep and profound philosophy, spiritual things in one book. It's like a magic book, really. It's fascinating. So we come, we just came back yesterday in New York from Miami. We were together with very inspirational people, Bjarke yeah. Ingels, Fabio Novembre, Michel Rochkin, Stefan Sagmeister. We put together a group of very diverse, uh, creative, innovative people to go watch a mass phenomenon, a mass event that was Super Bowl and the Pepsi Halftime Show. Uh, you live in the show business mm. in Italy. You have a, an apartment here in New York. You know America very well. You were actually hosting the show for Italy out of New mm. York for, for some time. So you live between the two worlds. Mm. What's the biggest difference in the way <laughs> Italy and the U.S. build brands, celebrate brands, drive innovation, drive business? And is there anything that America should learn from Italy and anything that Italy should learn from America? Um. In, in, a, in a funny way, the first funny things I can say for my experience is when I'm in New York with my friend here and someone come up with an idea, then we're all like super excited about this idea and you really have a feeling that you can really do it, you know, and then you go to sleep and you, maybe you were not doing that, but you go to sleep and you're super excited. When this happened with my friend in Italy, you start with an idea and then they start to tell you why you cannot reach this goal <laughs> because there is soup that, you know, the Mediterranean depression, uh, negative things, no, but then, no, but, and then at some point you say, no, but we have to do it. And then you start to see, who do you know? Because if you know 
the guy who's friend of cousin, then it become like, a, you know, if you are a doorman in Italy in a very good building with for a lot of profession, you are fine <laughs> because in Italy, you always have to know someone to do something. Here, it's more like, mm, uh, like if, you're, if you're good to do something, you do it, you know. Mm, it's there is med- more meritocracy. Mer- more meritocracy. This is the point. Uh, what I can see in the show business, American is number one because it's probably in the DNA. Everything here becomes a show. You can do a show whatever you want. In Italy, we have it in a more in a comedy way, in a different way, more also related to comedy and drama. We are from Greek, you can see. But what I see also here, they are more specific. And you know, you go to a doc, you have a problem in your knee, you go to a knee doctor. <laughs> then probably he knows a lot about knee, but he doesn't really know something about the legs, for example, it's just this. In Italy, you go to the dentist, but it can also be your therapist after two times because <laughs> they start to talk and tell you, oh, I saw your tooth, but baby, you're not happy in life. You know, they, <laughs> they, they go out of, you know, the contest. So everything it's in the box here is more easy, especially everything works because they are more organized. What I can see, at least when I, I, I shoot a movie here, here, People are more organized. In Italy, we just... Bah, 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 bah. But if something wrong goes, Italian people, just because they are not so organized, they are used to struggle much, and they, are, they always have an idea that it can fix the situation in a more flexible and easy way than American. This is for my, uh, my experience. And the other thing, if you want to do a business meeting in America, you go in an office and you have a meeting room. and you do. In Italy, you go to a restaurant, and then you start to talk about the food that you're eating, how good it is. And then when coffee comes, you start to say, ah, by the way, <laughs> you start to talk about business. But then it's too late and you fix another lunch, <laughs> another dinner. And my friend, my girlfriend, she's from Iceland. He said, wow, when I have to talk about uh, business in Italy, I have to do like a three lunch, four dinner, <laughs> two aperitivos. And then maybe, yeah, it's more, we are more like, you know, but it's this crazy things that we have, I think is good with problem. Yeah, okay. and I think, look, I, I work as well mm. between the two worlds. I totally agree with you. We call it in Italy, the first thing you were saying, mm. l'arte dell'arrangiarsi. Yeah, yeah. The Americans that are really, really good in marketing and branding mm. call it in a very elegant way, okay. problem solving. Problem solving, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and right now, you know, in, in a world where you need to move at the speed of light, every mm. time you do branding, innovation, new products, there is not space anymore and there is not that luxury anymore uh, to do things in sequence. Mm-hmm. You need to work everything together, different teams, cross-functional teams. So the kind of ability to work on the gray areas and to move across mm-hmm. territories and everything is becoming really, really mm-hmm. important. And I'm thinking again in a, in a business, in a company like PepsiCo, to navigate you know, uh, the organization, you need to have empathy and I think Irony Ooh. helps, breaking the ice, connecting with people. And I remember back at uh, the time of university, I did a thesis, for instance, on the irony of Madame Bovary of Flaubert, that mm. is the opposite yeah. of irony. But there was a lot of ironies from Flaubert towards his character. What is irony for you? You can feel it in everything you do. Oh, yes. The- for me, it's the same. I, like, for me, the irony, it's, it's like, let's say, it's like the... It's like a track to move heavy stuff. You know, without irony, I would be, you know, under this pressure or just get stuck. But then I have this irony that it's just a track who does like a brrrr, and then brrrr, it became everything light. And especially in the worst moment of my life, I see irony and, and it saved me. Even in my father's funeral that I was, of course, one of the saddest day of my life, I, I laugh a couple of times because it, there was something that was so ironic. And if you don't get, if you don't take life so personal, you just sometimes you are the actor, but sometimes you're just the audience. No, I, this is what I do. Sometimes I feel I'm the actor in life. Sometimes I'm just the audience and I look things. And look at with this ironic glasses, it makes everything much easier. And, uh, you know, you go to a funeral, there, there are many reasons to laugh. And then uh, you don't know if you can do it, but inside you can say, wow, this is very funny, you know. <laughs> and, and switching topic, in Italy, everybody knows you. You're, you're a celebrity, you walk on the street and they stop you. You're always on stage. 
and especially today with the world of social media, uh, you can really craft your image, mm. you know, through your platforms. And this is true for the big celebrities, mm. but for the person in the street every day. Yeah. Uh, do you design your personal branding, the way people, are, are you really careful about how you're gonna project yourself, how you look, or, no. or is? No, actually one time I met this guy, he's an American guy who was working in Italian TV. And at some point he said, you know, and then I'm doing also this CD with my band, even if I'm not a singer. And I say, oh, so what do you do? You know, you know it's also nobody buys CD anymore. No, it's, it's helped me to move my brand. And I say, how ah, do you have a brand? I say, <laughs> which brand? I say, I am the brand. Ah, yeah, of course, because this was a very American style. And, and for me, I was 45, so it was like a few years ago. And I said, I never thought about myself as a brand. It's, I've just talked about myself as a person, I do what I like, I try to do it my best, but I don't design my brand, but I, I, I know that, that the, you do something, but there is also the way that people can see what you do. So I'm just uh, careful to make the people understand in the right way what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but I don't design any, any, any brand and, it, and it's just me, you know, basically. I mean, you say it also, authenticity, be yourself. You yeah, started yeah. like this, right? Yeah, I think In the so. radio. I think this is the only way to be, to, to do something. It's just because uh, my point of view, it's the only one in the world like yours, like, like everyone. So if, if I just say what I see uh, from my point of view, you have an, a, an original point of view. They say that if everybody will, because what is difficult sometimes it's also your desire, what, what you want or your goal. Sometimes they are not really yours. This is why I said before, you have to clean as much as you can because sometimes you desire something and then you realize oh, this is not what I really want. This is what the society wants or yeah. this is what my dad wants. You know, I, I, I went to law school but because my father wants a lawyer, but it's not mine. It, I just want to be loved for my dad. You know, like, so you have to every time to work and, and do what you really want. And then when you do what you love, it's, it's your thing and um, it's, it, it's for sure successful. You know, you wake up and you, you don't ask yourself what I do, you wake up and you ask why do I, why do, I do this, they say. And it's not my quote, you know. Just wake up and ask yourself why are you doing this, not what to do. And the why somehow mm. is what we call often the, the purpose. You yeah. know, we, in, in every brand, going back yeah. to brand, you know, that especially now there is this trend of talking about the purpose of the brand, mm. purposeful brands. What is the purpose of Fabio Volo in life? But for me, like when I was, um, when I was a, uh, a teenager, I read the Michelangelo Buonarroti uh, book about his life. And Michelangelo said something that it really change my life in some way. Not, you know, like one book doesn't change your life, but really push you in a different point of view. So he said, I don't, I don't take a marble, no, a cube of marble, and I just do my statue. The statue, it's already inside. What do I do? It's take off all the extra marble that keep stuck the thing, you know? And this is what I, with this, what I do. I know I don't have to be someone else. I just need to bring my authenticity, this tattoo, not the masterpiece that I have inside, that everybody has inside. So for me, the purpose is to um, indagare, no? how do you say, like it's, um, you know, like to investigate. In investigate myself. And creativity or talent, it's, it, it's not who you are, you know, you don't do something and then you do this table and say, oh, this is who I am. No, creativity and talent are the tools to help you to understand who you are. So you have this life, this experience of life, and you are just trying to learn who you are. You know, you, in, in the end, it, you are working to, to know yourself and say, okay, okay, who's, who's Mauro? And then you do this, and then you do this, and you, okay, I'm, I'm a jealous person. No, I'm smart. No, I'm good on this. I'm not good on that. And then you use your talent, your creativity, because creativity is the breath of personality. So more you express yourself, more you learn who you are. It's, and, and it's never end the path, you know? I, I love it. I remember when I was studying philosophy back in school, Socrates and the Mayeutica. The mm. Mayeutica is the art of taking out, yeah. you know, what you already have inside yeah. and express yourself. And it's so, so important. Yeah, you have to become who you already are. You just need to, you know, 
And then talking about, I know now the time is finished, but <laughs> talking about Dante, it's very important. Like when I said before, all the answers are, are there. He's talking about God in this, in this specific um, moment in the Divine Comedy. And he, but when we talk about God, we also have to talk about our talent. It is, it's God, you know, basically. Everybody has something very uh, divine inside to bring it up, no? like Socrates said. And he said, in, in, he does this example that is very nice. When you are on the beach and you put your feet in the ocean, you know, you just look at, through the water and you see the bottom of, of the ocean. Now you see the herd. But when you go in the middle of the ocean, you don't see it. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's there. You don't have the tools to see the bottom. And this is when I said everybody has a talent. Everybody can be creativity, um, crea uh, creative because... Everybody has this. You just need to learn to make your tools more good to see your your bottom that it's there. No? What are you working on right now? I know you just released your book a few months ago. Yeah, a few months ago my book came out. I still do the radio because it's a daily radio show. Every morning I will uh, I will be an actor in a movie in uh, May, and I'm writing a new movie. Uh, that I'm the sc um, screenwriter, and uh, I am um, finished now a project for a TV series that for three season, and uh, I hope it will go. And where do you see yourself in ten years? I will see myself here and talking about <laughs> what I did. No, I see myself like the, the invite is open. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometime also my girlfriend she asked me, "What do you see us in ten years?" And I see like. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't want to know, actually, more than I don't know. I don't want to know where, I, you know, I don't have this goal in this direction. I just want to be, you know, I want to be where I'm happy to be, like here, for example. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you to have with me us. here. We have something, you know, we have been in your shoes today. Okay. And now it's becoming a ritual of this podcast. We have some shoes for you to wear when you are home so you can be in our shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Why home? They are so cool. You know, I want to yeah, walk. You can walk. In New York, for sure, you can if walk, I walk with this. If I shoes. walk in Italy, I don't know. But in Manhattan, for sure, there was no problem with this. And the bag okay. as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Fabio. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.